has got a new pair of Nike Air Maxes out and I'm a big fan. So I think these are coming out next week. I think the 12th, right? What is the 12th? Is that Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday? What is that? The 12th is Thursday, as per usual. Most shoes drop on a Thursday right now. They don't really drop on Fridays anymore. So they're coming out on um, next week, Thursday, a pair of Nike shorts. I think this is his Skepta's fourth collaboration. I'm pretty sure it's a fourth. We had a couple 97s. Tailwinds and these. I'm pretty sure this is the fourth one. TNs, 97s, Tailwinds and these, right? I'm pretty sure. So each model, oh, that's quite cool. He's had, he's been able to go into the archive of each model or each Nike archive and kind of bring them back to life, which is quite cool to see. Um, these are the new Nike shocks. They're the, I don't think these are an archive model because I'm pretty sure the old shocks you only have the shocks at the back. So I'm pretty sure it's a new model they brought out. Um, we first saw these on the runway, I think, last season or a couple of seasons ago with Comme de Garçon. They did a pair where they've got like a little gold chain going over it, similar to those kind of Gucci sneakers everyone wears. So yeah, pretty cool shoe. Maybe not the most London of shoe because I always get the feeling whenever Skipper does a collaboration with Nike, they they have a good synergy in terms of like pulling something out from the archives that's kind of tied into the kind of UK drum and bass, UK garage culture. I don't really see how Nike shocks are because I remember when I was in school, Nike shocks weren't the most coolest trainer to get. They were really expensive. I think they're 150 or 160 at the time. So, which, you know, most trainers back in those days were top tapped about 110. Those were 95s or 120 for... 98s or 90 or 97s right but nike shocks were mostly reserved for in my school personally speaking were mostly worn by like breakdance kids right so like mostly asian dudes filipino dudes loved nike shocks um and then i think there was a time and period where there was a lot of kind of like jamaicans in brixton used to wear shocks as well because they were you know they used to big chunky shoes you could wear with massive jeans but he did, he, they weren't really a cool shoe. You didn't really see kids wearing them in the, in your area, right? Everyone wanted to wear kind of 90s, 95s, TNs and stuff, but not really shocks for the most part. So I'm surprised he kind of pulled these out. But again, I'm a big fan of them. I think they look really good. So that I have not seen them in person, so I'm not sure how they feel because a lot of these Nike shoes, they look quite, they photo really well, but when you see them in real life, they kind of have that weird banana boat thing. They kind of bulge out towards the sides it just doesn't sit right so i'm really interested to see what these look like in actual person um again stacked so it, it kind of follows the route which we're going in for most shoes nowadays everything's sort of like a, with a thicker sole um i'm interested to see when the when the kind when it kind of goes because it always goes, goes in cycles right we go from chunky to slim but it's we're interested in place now because for the most part we have loads of chunky shoes with really slim uppers i, I could just think of like you know dr martin's being a good example the Jaden boot's got a massive chunky sole, but the top of it, the upper, is still the same. It's not. There's no padding on it, um, no liner, no collar protection. It's just completely one piece of leather. Um, so you see a lot of shoes do the same sort of thing. So a chunkier sole with a really slim upper top, which kind of you know gives that great little contrast. But I'm interested to see when it kind of flips back, and we go to like. <clears throat> We start going to maybe vulcanized shoes, maybe slim, a little, little bit more of a return back to the whole kind of conventional band old school kind of model shape or converse one stars which you only see really skaters wear for the most part you don't really see regular people where everyone's trying to wear like really chunky shoes for the most part which you know again i'm not i'm not that opposed to but these shoes really really cool coming black and red no two colorways which it makes the buying decision a lot easier um and this is on end so they're going to come out and they're like what one seven one seventy nine dollars so i'm assuming they're going to be 170 pounds probably right at 180 it's a lot of money man god damn but they look really nice i like them black and red let's see here the sole the sides looks really cool this is the instep i'm assuming right so you got a black upper with a metallic swoosh on both sides they sort of got the same sort of webbing you'd see on the tn so i'm assuming this is a new shock this isn't like a shock that came from the archive i'm pretty sure the shocks always have like the springs at the back only but i could be wrong so if you know correct me in the comments but i'm pretty sure this is a newer model but yeah, so fairly, I like the the tread as well on the bottom, really, really. Oh, you know, I also like the tread, which is a good um sign. This is what I didn't like on the what are they called? What are those cactus flower print shoes market thing? Oh, cactus, what are they called? Rejuvenates air tier tailwinds. Let me see if I can find them. I right, so hopefully I can show you guys what I mean. But there's a reason why I did. Oh, the Vapor Max. That's it. Nike Vapor Max, right? Nike Vapor Max. So the Vapor Max are quite popular. I see a lot of kids wearing them nowadays, um, or especially in my area. Like everyone's wearing these shoes, sort of like TNs with the bubbles underneath, right? But the reason why I don't like them, and maybe it's because I've got big feet, but basically the the bottom, the bubbles in the bottom of the shoe, sort of like um, they sort of squeeze in on the side. So 
when you're looking at them from, from below, you can't really see the bubbles. It just feels like you're floating, which then leads to your foot kind of like bulging out on the sides, if you get what I mean. So I'm going to kind of get the shoe up here. And you see, so you see that bit there, that sort of like sinks in. This bit here just underneath the, just by the sole, it sort of like dips back in there again. So you can't really see it from the top. I'm not sure if that makes any sort of sense, but the reason why I say this is because this on these Skepta shocks, if you see the bottom of the shoe where the tread is, the springs are essentially um, kind of outside of the side of the shoe. So what you see when you get when you look down is like a nice kind of like staggered pyramid sort of like silhouette, similar to the Balenciaga triple that I have. So they will look amazing in real life, I think, in person. J -j Judging by what I've seen, no banana thing at the front, really flat, which is cool. It doesn't point up like it did back in the day with the other rubbish tooling. Um, so it says here in the following. Joining forces once again with undisputed figurehead of the modern grime, the American sportswear giant teams we skipped off for this pair of shock TLs. Um, what's the writing here say? Let's quickly read this. No gravity. Da, da, da. First seen on the feet um, in the bullet from my gun video, the sneakers finished in the British. Oh, that, that came out a long time ago, isn't it? So shit. So this is probably during the same time as the Comme des Garçons um, collection then. Fair enough. Um, in the British art, a signature combination of black and red. Is that a signature combination? Black and red? Not sure about that one. Um, and stray and stray true to the OG form in contrast to the previous collaboration Air Mac models. Uh, wearing a grand filet all black upper with a disruptive metallic silver swoosh, lightweight textile <laughs> disruptive like that. A disruptive metallic swoosh. That is a very <laughs> clever use of words, isn't it? Absolutely means absolutely nothing, but you know, you all suddenly want that shoe now. Lightweight textures, mesh combined with a synthetic supportive cage while underfoot, all support shock cushioning gets dressed in striking university red, given the early 2000s technology, the attention it deserves. Finishing the look, the typical Nike uh, tongue branding has been uh, replaced with SK shock, a respectable nod towards the grammar suit under the XV, which is cool to see, man, because I think back in the day with collaborations, the box would never say the person's collaborate. It would just say like, you know, tier zero. It would never say the name. You'd only get the name on the actual shoe or sometimes you wouldn't get it on the shoe. So it's cool to see that they're giving these artists the ability to kind of change the label, change the actual wording on the box. It kind of makes it a little bit more special. And I think, you know, if you're if you're an artist and you kind of got collaboration, then you'd be able to change not just the colorway, but the entire branding on the shoe. It, it, it must feel good. It must be like a really good accomplishment. Um, again, from the top. See, oh, see what I mean about the, the springs? Um protruding from the sides this is a mark of a great shoe i think this is going to look impressive in, in real life like, that looks really cool i like that man it looks amazing again i'm not sure how popular it's going to be with um, the general hype beast consumer because again it's not your typical safe model it's a bit hard to wear um again the, the, the irony with these sort of shoes that are harder to wear is that you know this is the this is basically encompassing what actual sneakerheads are meant to this is what sneakerheads sneak being a sneakerhead is about really buying shoes like buying shoes like this that no one's really into and then sort of making them look cool but unfortunately you know nowadays or from even back in my days time in my time too people just waited to see what the cool thing was and just bought loads of them but i can't i can't see this not selling out and if it doesn't sell out anyway i just assume you know all it takes is one asap rocket to wear and all of a sudden it's completely gone so um i think congratulations to skepta for the shoe in general it's a really looks really cool i'm assuming there's going to be loads of clothes coming out of it too It'll be a waste of opportunity if they didn't do that. So I guess keep an eye out for that on all places. But yeah, it's coming out on the 12th. So this Thursday from most of your cool shops that you go and buy your stuff from. So just go check out Drop Date for the most part. That's what I use. I use dropdate.com, but there's other websites you can use too and find the links.